So the next step is to test our form. And if we click sign up after we fill it out, we get an error. And it says unknown action, the action create couldn't be found for registrations controller. So what that means is that Rails has come to the routes. It saw we made a post request for the sign up route. And then it went to look for the registrations controller and the create action. But we didn't define a create in here yet. So let's go do that. And let's say render plain thanks. And if we do that and we resubmit this form, what we'll get is the word thanks. And it's just rendering text and sending that back. And there's nothing else to it. It's actually super cool. But that isn't what we want to do. We want to take the form data and save it to the database or at least try to if it's valid. So how do we do that in our create action? Well, let's take a look at our submit in our logs. If we look at the last request, a post to sign up, we can see there is a section here called parameters. And we get all of the information that was in our form and it's split out into a Ruby hash like object. So we have user, user has an email, a password and a password confirmation, and even a commit. And, um, or the commit is outside of that user. So this user points to all of this information and it works like a Ruby hash. So in order to use this stuff in our controller, we can say params. And this will reference all of the stuff that you see in the parameters in the logs. And the params can come from either the routes in the URL, where you can specify like a username in there, and we can look at that and grab the correct user. But if you submit a form, it will also take all that data from your form and put that in the params. So that's where we are getting the params here. So if we want, we can say render plain params user. And this will actually print out that user that we submitted. So let's refresh. And here you go. Those are our params for the user. So we pulled the user out of params and we printed those out. So now we need to take all of this data that we got from params user and create a new user in our database. So this is how we can refer to all of the params if we say params in general. Then we can dig into that hash by saying params user and that will give us all of the user information. So the first one here if we go to our terminal would give us actually this entire object. So if we were to do that it would give us this whole thing and if we do a params user, it's going to look for the user item inside of there and give us the results of that. And so that is what you would get when you say params user. And we saw that printed out in our browser, just the user portion of that. So this is really useful to grab just what we need to create that user. So we're gonna do another thing here. We're gonna say user.new, and we're gonna say params user here. And this is going to take that hash of params, give it to user.new, the same way that we would say user.new email is uh, bob at bob and password is password. Because as you saw in our params, that's the same thing as we see here with just the user section pulled out. So params user is going to give us basically the same hash and that's effectively the same thing we're doing here. We're just hard coding that. So we can use this to make it dynamic. So whatever the browser gives us, we use that data. Now it's not secure to do this. So we're going to actually make user params as a helper method here that is private and user params is going to say params require a user. So it's kind of the same thing as params user, except this one will raise an error if user was not found as a key inside of that hash. And then we're going to say we're going to allow the email, the password, and the password confirmation. And the reason we do that is because we want to say these are the only things we allow you to set. If there was like an admin true or false flag, you don't want users to be able to say, yeah, I'm an admin, I'm an admin, I wanna do whatever. Um, that would be very, very bad. So this way you say, these are only the allowed attributes that we can set. So this is going to assign a bunch of those things, email, password, password confirmation to a new user in memory, 
again, just like we did before. But here we want to say if it saves to the database successfully, we'll run all our validations and check if it saves to the database correctly. If it's successful, we want to redirect you to the root path and we'll put in a notice and say logged in or um, successfully created account because we didn't just log you in. But if you weren't able to save successfully, we can render the new view or the template for that. So render new is going to go to app views registrations new.html.erb and it will render this again and give you that back in the browser. So if anything went wrong, we're going to do that. And we can also have a flash alert here and say something was wrong and tell you what the errors were, but forms are actually smart enough to be able to display errors. So we'll go update our form to include errors. So let's um, go update our form and include some error messages if it wasn't successful. So what will happen is you'll create a new user in memory, the browser will submit an invalid password, for example, maybe it's too short or the email doesn't work, and it will go and re-render this page, the same one that you were just on, but because we've reinstantiated the user, we can render the same form with errors. So here we'll say if at user dot errors dot any question mark, then we'll display some sort of thing here. And so we can say alert, alert danger to use the bootstrap alerts. And then inside of here, we can have um, our messages. So at user dot errors dot full messages will take the errors and give you a list of English messages that you can print out and we can call dot each and for each one of those messages we'll print that out. So we'll loop through each one and we'll put a div here with the message inside of it and close that div and we'll tab that over and we can test this out now if we go back to our signup field and we say Chris and we don't fill that out correctly, but we do put a regular correct password in, we should get um, this printed out with errors. And I made a typo there, this should be message and message on both of those. So let's try it one more time, fixing our error, and now we get email must be a valid email address. And now we can go and try some other things. So for example, what if our passwords do not match? We can click sign up and you're gonna get the password confirmation doesn't match password and email must be a valid email address. So it's going to get all of the errors and display them at the top of this form. So now we have the error side of this being handled correctly. Now the next step is actually to log in the user and that is a little bit something different. So we're gonna talk about that in the next video.